In this video, I'm going to explain how I created this animated icon in Figma. What are the steps? What's the overall logic behind all this? Uh, I'm not going to go step by step specifically with this icon, but rather I thought it might be useful to go over the overall process you can then apply to basically anything, right? So the logic that I'm about to explain with animating icons or just animating anything actually in Figma can be used for basically anything, right? So let's let's get started. Let's take a look around the file. As you can see here, I have some brainstorming. Uh, I tried to outline what could be actually shown uh, in the icon. But if you take a look over here, we do have a test frame and we do have a component. This component is interesting because it feels like it's the animation that you just saw outline into individual steps. And that's because that's exactly the case, right? So uh, we're gonna go over this in a minute, but the test frame here contains this little icon this little component. Uh, this is an instance of the collaborative design uh, component. And if we launch the prototype and take a look here, you can see how it's moving around, right? So what you can see here is this frame, this instance of this component. And um, yeah, that's basically all there is to it. Now, of course, you can just place a component and expect it to move the way you want to, you need to define these movements. And that's exactly what I did, uh, what uh, we're gonna go over within this component. Uh, when I go to prototype to view interactions, you can see there is a bunch of arrows. So these interactions define the movement, okay? And if you take a closer look, you're gonna find out that these are actually not interactions per se, because interactions imply that you have to interact with this in some way uh, to produce an action. But that's not the case. As you can see, it's all of this is happening without any input from me, right? I'm not clicking anything. No, I'm not pressing anything. This just keeps happening on the screen. So it's not really an interaction. Um, so to specify what's happening here is I have an after delay interaction. Basically, you can select a bunch of, um, you know, cl on click, on drag while hovering. None of that. We're going to go for after delay and after delay one millisecond. That's basically immediate, right? You can not when you put a zero in this field, one millisecond is going to show up. So it's the lowest you can go. Um, so after one millisecond, you're going to change to this means a variant is going to be changed, right? So you're going to go from this variant to this variant, this second hidden variant, right? That's the logic of this interaction. You're going to go to variant two and it's going to happen smart animate and it's going to happen over 500 milliseconds, which means half a second. So essentially this little action over here is basically telling Figma that as soon as it the prototype is loaded, you wait one millisecond and which basically means you do it immediately. And after one millisecond, you start changing this to the second variant and you're gonna do smart animate interaction and it's gonna take 500 milliseconds. Um, now, if you take a look at the beginning of the animation, you can see that it starts from an empty screen, right? Empty screen and then this window flies in. So the reason why it's flying in is that actually this variant contains this window as well. If you take a look at frame two, frame two is basically the frame that you can see in all of these remaining variants, okay? So it is there. It's all the way pushed out all the way to the right. But uh, if we now take a look at the second variant where we do have the frame visible, you can see that we have these two matching layers in two different positions. So what happens is when you do smart animate, Figma is going to calculate, going to kind of smoothen out this transition and it's going to realize that, okay, we do have one object twice, 
across these two variants. And if we transition from the first to the second one, that means the position of these of this frame is gonna change gradually because that's what's being changed, right? This frame's position is being changed and therefore movement is created, okay? And that's basically all you need to know about creating animations, okay? So if you now take a look at Polygon 2, which is the red cursor, you can see that it is in the first variant as well, but it's again moved from all the way to the left. So at the beginning of this animation, the frame flies in from the right, whereas the red cursor flies in from the left. That's because the first variant has the frame 2 on the right and the cursor on the left. And now you basically just need to do the same for transitioning from position 2, from state 2 to state 3, and so on and so forth, right? And then if you just keep adding stuff, if you keep changing stuff in a smart way, you occasionally change the after delay value and the transition length value to kind of get the movement that you need you're gonna get to this result eventually right so that's basically all there is to know about animating anything in figma okay so let's try and create another component similar to this one in structure and to see kind of how this works in practice. Let me duplicate this, remove this. I'm gonna name this test frame two. And I'm going to take this instance, command option B to detach it, enter and remove. So it's empty now, okay? So we're gonna rename this to animation test. Then we're gonna turn this into a component, create another, and we're gonna add a circle. It's gonna be a black circle placed in the first variant. Then I'm gonna duplicate that and place that in the second second variant. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to prototype, click the first variant and connect that to the second variant. And I'm going to do after delay zero, change to property one and smart animate. It's going to take 500 milliseconds. Okay. Ease in and out. And then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to connect the second one to the first one and do after delay 800 milliseconds change to property one default smart animate 500 milliseconds um so it's gonna wait for a bit there right so it's not immediately gonna start shrinking but we have created a loop right so this should animate now let me use an instance of this on my test frame 2 i'm gonna add a flow starting point called flow 2 and when i launch the prototype if i launch the prototype and zoom in and press reset then you can see that we get this little nice animation so sometimes the animation doesn't start right away then pressing r as in reset helps but as you can see it's moving on its own again i'm not doing anything and that's because we have created this little loop there now this logic is completely identical to whatever we have here although this is way more complicated okay we got multiple steps but in the end this also returns back to its initial state and the loops keep on looping okay um, I can also place this right next to my first animation let's see and yeah let me select flow one and we do have two separate animations side by side um, so the logic is pretty straightforward. I used the same technique to create this, although it took me a bit more time. So hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully this helped you understand how to create animations if in animations in Figma. If it did, I would appreciate you leaving a like. And also check out my store where you can find this animation if you want to support the channel and other useful files for your Figma workflows. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.